These triggers are coming against your love. These triggers of the past are coming against your divine love. These triggers have a story. They're going to tell you why you should be disconnected. You see, fear, fear wants to get the goal of fear is to get you alone, backed up in your house, disconnected, and beat you up and throw you any idea the smaller that fear can get you. I lived in isolation for years, my brothers and sisters. I had a fear told me that I was allergic to every chemical, every mold spore, every food on this earth, until I ended up in the mountains of Santa Barbara living in isolation. I know all about fear that brings torment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Fear wants you in isolation. Fear wants you alone where it can rule and reign. Because how are you going to stay open? How are you going to back up fear consciousness, sin consciousness, when you have no space in your heart because you've been made small, you've been constricted, you don't have your heart's desires, you don't have spirit power, you don't have the mind of Christ. You may have it, but you're not experiencing it. You have the mind of fear. Fear has taken over. So the more that fear can back you up, it can give you deceptions. It can give you lying symptoms. It can create more fear. You see, fear proliferates its own life. And perfect love casts out fear. So this is something, if fear is the root of every error, this is something you want to be aware of. You want to have a weapon against Amen. You want to pick up your weapon, your sword of love, and go out and connect with people. When you pick up this sword to go somewhere, well, you are going to be challenged. You want to go where you are comfortable, not you. The imposter wants to limit your acquaintances, wants to limit your fellowships, wants to uh, make you small, that when you go to open your heart, when you go to love, when you go to give, you can only go to a couple of places. You see, so you're going to end up not going. Amen. And the smaller that it can make you push you back, push you back, the more fear there is, and then you can't go at all. You know, I've had clients that are agoraphobic. You know what agoraphobia is? It's you can't leave the house. Now, you doctors can analyze that as a chemical imbalance. I'm going to tell you what agoraphobia is. It's fear of leaving the house. One trigger to another figure, a trigger has backed someone so up, they have bowed to the spirit of fear, not them. The imposter has deceived them into compromising themselves, into not being who they are, into bowing to fear. Amen. And then the limits therein. Smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, maybe first you can just go to church and go to the market. Go see Aunt, Aunt Sarah and once in a while uh, go to a little meeting on Tuesday. Amen. Maybe go to work oh, from nine part-time, nine to twelve. You see, then all of a sudden, well, there are people at the job, fear would say, there are people at the job that are really being abusive to you, blah, blah, blah. So what may happen in the job is you're not speaking your truth with love and now all this energy is coming in at you to the point where you're getting anxiety, you're not taking care of yourself, fear is raining, hallelujah, fear is raining, and all of a sudden you got to get out of there, you give up the job. Then you go to the church, and something happens at church with somebody, they say something, and maybe you don't take care of yourself. You know, there's two parts to this. One is, you know, the, the, the opposition fear would have you back up and not express your truth with love. I mean, you express your truth with love, and you love every. You say to somebody, hey, I love you. What just happened there? I don't feel good about that, and I don't want to feel bad about you. Let's talk about it. Let's, I want to express something to you. I know who you are. Would never mean to hurt me. I just love you. And you, and somebody comes into that message like that and just loves you back. Amen. You're not letting things go. You're not walking in passive love. You're walking in divine love. You're walking in authority and love. Your authority, your integrity, and your love. You see, this is where it gets a little challenging. You're not walking in a little pious, I love everybody, I'm a good religious person. No, you're walking in the power of divine love. 
which connects, which is authentic. Amen. You speak your truth with love. You love people wherever you go. You are not quenched. You are the spirit person. You are going from love to love, glory to glory, connecting with people, becoming more of who you are, and kicking fear's butt is your goal. So fear would back you up to not speak, to be victimized. You'd be bowing to a spirit of victimization, but you speak your truth with love. You're coming out. You're coming out with the sword of love. So everything you do has love consciousness in it, God consciousness in it. It's not pious. It's not weak. It's the strongest authority on God's good earth because it has the power to cast out fear and every principality that has fear behind it. Pride, fear, self-exaltation, shutting you down, okay? Blame, fear of self-justification, shutting you down. Victimization, fear of victimization, shutting down your expression, that you're not expressing yourself, that fear has you bow to other people's expression. Why does it want you to bow your expression? So it can shut you down and take you out of that connection, out of the love one another, out of the commandment of God, out of the God is love, out of the sword of love, out of the love is a battlefield mentality that you can only win with keeping your heart open with the love of God. Amen. The carnal mind is enmity against God and enmity against you. Irrevocable hostility is enmity, the Bible says. So you are in a war. And the only choice you have is to walk in love. Love and authority. To be true to yourself and honor everybody else. Hallelujah. This is the only way out of this. This is the only way to overcome fear. There is no other way. I was an emotional therapist for over 20 years in Los Angeles, California. Okay? And if you think you can overcome fear by releasing it, feeling it, releasing any blah, 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 all that, you can't. It's an on-the-job training. It's a walking in the moment. It's faith. It's divine love. You have it, and you want to experience giving it with the revelation of what God is saying when he says perfect love casts out fear, or I'm saying love is a battlefield. Amen. Pat Benatar. I'm quoting Pat. Love is a battlefield. And if you want to hold on to your love, you're going to have to identify and recognize the limitations and the pushback of fear consciousness that doesn't want you to go here and there and lead an expansive life by faith, by choice. By warfare decision. Oh, you don't want to go there, imposter. <laughs> you know, when I first got healed and God showed me this, I, I used to have to pray 20 minutes before I go into any building because the imposter didn't want me to go. Wanted me back in isolation. Had me. And wanted to keep me there. And I learned to retaliate. Oh, you don't like it here, imposter? Well, I'm going to add more of this. You see, let's go where you don't like it, and I'm going to add more. Now, this is good warfare. See, I don't have to go just where I'm comfortable because the love of God is shed Brahma. I'm comfortable anywhere. I'm a spirit person. I can go anywhere. Amen? Anywhere on this earth, I'm comfortable. I love everybody. I'm not limited to the mentality of, oh, I can only go there. Because, you know, I don't like the way they move. I don't like the way they dance. I like to line dance, and they're doing hip-hop. Well, if your mind says to you, I like to line dance, don't go there. They're doing hip-hop, and the new now music is hip-hop, and you can only go country dancing, a line dance three, three hours away from your house. You may be being deceived into giving up your dance and all the beautiful people you may meet. Amen. Do what fear doesn't want to do. You know, you hear this from people. I've heard this. Do what fear doesn't want to do. And it's very true. And I'm grateful to hear it. But we're not taking it into the sword, the battlefield of love. Do what fear doesn't want to connect with. Connect where fear doesn't want to go. Expand the heart. Expand the love sword. Expand the connections. Expand your life. And perfect love will cast out all that fear. Watch it rise up. Watch that evil fear, that self-righteous devil, all oh, that generational hate. Rise up. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Oh, watch it go crazy and try to shut you down. And you say, no, imposter, I'm here to take you out. You hate them, and I hate you. I'm on to you. I know exactly what you're trying to do. You don't like this? There'll be more of this tomorrow. 
Amen. And before you know it, you keep adding on to your heart connections that fear doesn't like. And I'm going to tell you, you will be in the joy of the Lord. This is land of the heart. Every issue, every dysfunction in life is an issue of the heart being confined, limited by fear. Amen. We can break down any beautiful teaching of the Bible and it's going to come down right here. Fear has become an idol. Hallelujah. And it doesn't belong to you. God has translated you, transformed you from this sin consciousness, from this fear of your ancestors, to be who you are, the righteousness of God in Christ, divine love, power, authority, joy. Amen. A fruits of the Spirit, which is yours to appropriate. So why not cut to the chase and go to the right land? Any land, of course, that has pushed you back is the right land. When I came out, I had to start taking my foods back. I had to take back chemicals. I had to fight that before I even get outside my house, hallelujah, and take the real land, the issue of the heart, the issue of connection, the condition of empowering myself against fear with the divine love of God. I wasn't taking a real land. I was taking the pre-land. All these foods, yes, you could say, oh, that was so brave, Reverend Juliana. You ate what you couldn't eat. Oh, I thought I was going to die. Yes, I was that deceived. I thought I was going to die eating food. Hallelujah. I was angry once at a pastor, Pastor Rachel, never forget her, a sister of mine, who told me to eat. <laughs> oh, we went out one time. She told me, just eat. It's like telling a cripple to cross the street, just eat. I looked at her like how cruel what my mind was telling me is she to tell somebody that's starving to death to eat. Or she was telling me to eat. She knew it was a deception. I wasn't there yet. Amen. In the end, I had to go to her house and stay with her in the South and eat every kind of junk food, food that, you know, really was not even on uh, an allergic person's menu. There was no recognizable food. It was all Southern fried junk food, no vegetarian dishes, no uh, macrobiotic dishes, no health food, no low protein, high protein, nothing. Junk. And God healed me on junk and Dairy Queen in the South, hallelujah, to show me that he was God, God is God, and food is food, and fear is a deception. Oh yes, fear is a deception. Amen. It's about the connection. It's about the healing of the heart. It's about keeping the heart open with love, not being tempted by your generational strongholds to shut down to things. If you think of what did your parents shut down to? What were they intolerant of? How did they limit their connections? Or if your parents had a lot of limited connections, beliefs, and self-righteous ideas, and mind control about how everybody had to be, then possibly your carnal mind, your imposter consciousness, has picked some of this up and is deceiving you into shutting down to a big part of life. But you want to enlarge your heart. Why? Why is this so important? Why can't you just live a nice little small life? Because perfect love casts out fear, disease, dysfunction, mental illness, drama, back pain. Hallelujah. Perfect love, divine love, expanding your heart through connections, giving of yourself, sharing of your heart, expressing your truth. All this requires authentic connection. And it's not going to come to you. You're going to have to go out and take it and fight the good fight. You're going to fight the battle of your life. I had to fight all that foolishness first. Chemicals, move into houses I couldn't walk into. Fools, oh, two years of all this. <laughs> mercury, put mercury back in my mouth two years. I thought I was like walking on water, taking all this land, hallelujah, laying down my life. And then I had to see, wow, these are issues of the heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. It God meets you where you are. Amen. I'm saying cut to the chase. Everything will be healed in your body. Then there were times, there were times in the end I would go to step out and uh, think I was so cool, take more land, take more land of the body, and God wouldn't let me do it. He'd say, no, just go back there and deal with your friends. <laughs> it's not easy to see. Amen. It's not easy to see. However, to simplify it and say perfect love, Cast out fear. Love is a battlefield. Love is the sword, the power over fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Go forth and live large. Live large. Living large is the answer. 
living large is the answer because what's going to come up to challenge you is the constriction of sin consciousness, of what's wrong with everybody, of what's unacceptable, intolerance, self-righteousness, religion, all these things that have taken mankind down since the beginning of time. But it doesn't belong to you. You have the weapon that you need. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have the weapon that you need. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Perfect love. Perfect love. Cast out fear.